F of, so section yeah, come on section 4.5 and 4.6 f of x equals 2 times x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 4 you can actually write that 2x squared minus 18 over <coughs> x squared minus 4. And I want you to go through all the stuff we learned in section 3, section 4, increasing, decreasing, inflection point, min, max, and find all the stuff about it. That means I need the first derivative. And that's the quotient rule. This times the derivative of that minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. I'm going to cheat and just put the answer there. To save some time, I'm just putting the answer there. And while I'm at it, I'll put the second derivative. Again, the quotient rule again, you can use that. And if you clean it, I'm assuming we all know how to take the derivative now. Jimbo. Inflection points, min max, increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. So you guys have the master. Asymptotes. Yeah. That's Mr. McDonald, the one who yells, the guy in the blue. They were wondering if your class actually normal. Because you scream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Right. Yep. <laughs> you like those sound effects, huh? <laughs> They're interesting. Yeah. <coughs> Never play golf with him. He's a minus two. <laughs> Phenomenal golfer. He's a scratch golfer, a minus two. I played with him a couple of times. He can pinpoint where he wants it. His card says minus two, probably better than that now. Plays every time, every, oh, every day almost. Okay. I know I have to get under his skin. I drive the cart over his balls, shove them into the ground. He gets mad at me. Now, we need to graph this. So to graph it and find all the pieces, I'm going to grab a clean sheet of paper, which I'm sure I'm going to have three, four sheets between it. But for now, I'm going to try to write everything we did before. f prime of x, the first layer, the second layer, f double prime of x. So I'm giving you these. I said these are the derivative, first and second derivative. Let's look at the first derivative. I'm saving this sheet for later, for the graph, so <coughs> I'll bring it back in a few minutes. Let's look at f prime, just one sheet for f prime of x. Let me write it down so I don't have to keep looking back and forth. And I want to find everything about the first derivative. I need to find out where does the derivative, I mean, uh, where is the derivative undefined? Where is the derivative zero? The critical numbers, critical values. Again, where the derivative is equal to zero, derivative is undefined. Where is the derivative zero? You take the top of the fraction, set it equal to zero. X equals to zero. Where is the derivative n defined? X squared minus four equals to zero. X equals what? Plus or minus two. Now let me look at my function, take a peek at my function. Can you tell me where the function is n defined? My demand says x cannot be what? Plus or minus 2. Because that will make the bottom 0. Can't be. 
So you can't have a y value when x is 2 or minus 2. So when I draw my box here, I go my critical values for the first derivative is 0, negative 2 and plus 2. But wait a minute. The negative 2 and plus 2 are no-nos. You can't use them. So there's a thick line reminding me I can't use them. There's the minus 2 and undefined. I shouldn't write infinity. I should write undefined. D and E. Two D and E. What about when X is zero? When X is zero, that's what? Negative eighteen over negative four, which is what? Nine over two? Four and a half? So this box here for the first, let's finish the first derivative while we're looking at it. What do you want to use for test point? To the left of the minus 2, what should we use? Minus 3? Between minus 2 and 0. Between 0 and 2. Between 2 and infinity. 3. The derivative at negative 3. Now here's the good news with the first derivative. The bottom is always going to be what? Positive, because that's a squared. I don't have to do it. When x is negative, what's 20 times a minus 3? Negative. What's negative over positive? Negative. So here is negative. That tells me it's decreasing. Let's try a negative 1. The bottom is positive. The top is negative. That's also a negative. <coughs> negative. Let's try the 1. Positive over positive, that's a positive. <coughs> that's increasing. And the last one of three, positive and positive, that's also positive, that's increasing. I am done with the first derivative. Nice and neat, beautiful, clean. Done. I know we have a min point here. Decreasing then increasing. I'm done with the first derivative. What's the next move? The second derivative? Yes. Yep. Why not just eliminate it all together and just have a test point either one or three? Can't. It just happens to be here the same, both. That doesn't mean they're gonna be the same. Oh, okay. No. He's saying eliminate that red line, just use one of them. Can't. You still need to test each segment. He's look I know what he's thinking. He's like, well, this is it didn't change here, it must be the same. What well, you're gonna see in the second derivative is gonna change, possibly. Now let's do the second derivative. So I'm done with the first derivative, that page is done. Add that to my list. Let's take a clean page for the second derivative. Here's the second derivative x. I need to find out where the second derivative is zero.
you take the top of the fraction, set it equal to zero, and that will have no solution. Because the only way to be zero, the negative 20 can't be zero. The only way if this piece inside the parentheses is zero. And that could never happen. Why? Because if you take the 4 to the size, you have 3x squared equals negative 4. It can't be something squared equals a negative number. What about the second derivative is 0? That's when the bottom of the fraction is 0. That means x equals what? Plus or minus 2. Well, we know the plus or minus 2 right here. The function is undefined. We already have them there. So there's no more addition to cut the second derivative. And I also, what I like about the second derivative, I know the top is always going to be positive. Always. Oh, I'm sorry, negative, not positive. The top is always negative. Why? Yep. This is a negative, and that's always a positive. Positive times a negative, that's a negative. So when I'm testing to see if it's concave up or down, I know the top is always going to be negative. Let's take a test point in each one of these segments. Before the minus 2, I'll use a minus 3. Between the minus 2 and 2, I'm a fan of zeros. More than a 2, that's a 3. What is the second derivative at negative 3? It's negative on the top. 9 minus 4, positive a cubit, that's positive. That's a negative. That tells me it's concave down. The next piece. Let's take the 0. It's negative on the top. When it's 0, that's a negative. A cubit, that's a negative. Negative over negative, positive. Concave upward. After that, the 3. The 3 is what? Negative on the top, positive on the bottom, that's a negative. Concave down. No inflection, correct, because this one is a hole. If I don't have a hole here, there'll be one here and one there. Now let's bring in the section that we missed, section 3.5. I left it out, and you'll see now why I'm going to go back to it. If I go to graph this, I'm supposed to have everything that I need. <coughs> I'm supposed to have everything that I need. There's the minus 2 and the 2. Just to remind me, don't cross them. This is not going to be a good picture, the one I'm drawing right now. And that's the other one. Zero and nine over two is right here. That's that point, the min point. It looks like this. Let me look before the minus two. It says the function is decreasing is concave downward. This is where my problem is right now. It's decreasing is concave downward. Okay. Is this decreasing concave downward? Is this also decreasing concave downward? Is this one decreasing concave downward? Is this one? So where is it coming from? Where are you starting from? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, so that's this piece. After that, let's look at that piece from here, this line to this line. The function is decreasing, it's going to level right here. So I know this piece is going to look like this. 
It's decreasing concave upward. And what happens after you hit this point? It's increased concave which way? Upward. That piece, I'm good with it. I have no problem with that. The last piece, it says what? <coughs> the function is increasing concave downward. Well, it's increasing, that means coming from way down. And it's going upward. Well, that could be this one. That could be that one. That could be this. That could be that. Where is it going to end at? Which one of them? And that's where section now four, five comes in. It's going to tell us where to start from, where to end at. I can tell you because I know something about the function. This is going to start the two here. If I draw the two here, what the function should look like is this one. Should start from two and decrease. And it should look level at two. That's what it should happen. How did I know that? I used section 4.5. So how do we find where the function starts from? How do we find where the function ends at? Well, let's think about this. What's the x value down here? Down way down here, what's the x value? Infinity. Negative infinity. What's the x value down there? Take the limit as x approaches negative infinity and the limit as x approaches infinity and see what the function levels to. So that's section now. <coughs> section 4.5. The same, I'm going to come back to this problem and finish it. So I'll leave all these pieces here. This is the problem. f of x equals 2x squared minus 18 over x squared minus 4. I need to know where it's going to start and end at. You take the limit as x approaches negative <coughs> infinity. Well, when you take the limit as x approaches negative infinity or infinity, you're supposed to plug in the value in. You go, well, x is infinity, square it. What do we have? Infinity square, which is still infinity. Multiply it by 2, still infinity. Minus 18, still infinity. So you can't really plug in infinity. So how do we take the limit as x approaches negative infinity? We look at the expression here, the top and the bottom. What is the highest power of x? 2. 2, yep. So we're going to divide every one of these by x squared, x to the power of 2. So when you divide by x to the power of 2, what do we have? This becomes the limit as x approaches negative infinity of what? 2 minus 18 over x squared over 1 minus 4 over x squared. As x approaches minus infinity, you have a calculator? Let's use like a million for infinity. Is that a good number, small number? Negative million. Let's see what the 18 over negative a million square will be. Here's my calculator. 18 divided by negative 1 million. Mil million is not infinity, but let's use that number. Squared. Oh, I should put the square on the outside because the way these calculators are smart. Let's try it again. Probably 18 divided by negative 1 million squared. 
Look what the calculus is telling me. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11, if you can see it. <coughs> oh, the light, no. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11, which is almost what? Zero. So when you have, when you take the limit as x approaches infinity, anything over x or anything over x squared, it will go to infinity. This will go to infinity. That will go to infinity. Because that number is so big, 4 divided by a massive number is going to be 0. doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So what's my final answer to this? 2 over 1, which is 2. So your function is going to start from 2. Where is it going to end at? Where it's going to end, we take the limit as x approaches infinity, not negative, positive infinity. <clears throat> now again, divide by x to the highest power. And what are we going to have? 2 minus 18 over x squared divided by what? 1 minus 4 over x squared. And any term that has x in the bottom of it, or x squared, or x cubed, will go to 0 as x approaches infinity. So where is it going to end at? 2 over 1, which is 2. Now let me get back to graphing it. Add to the list where we're going to start from 2, right? And where we're going to end at 2. Start from 2, end at 2. Now I should be able to graph it by looking at this sheet in front of me. Why these problems like five pages long. Now imagine if you had to take the derivative yourself. It gets even worse. We're going to start from two. There's one, there's two. Since you're starting and ending at the same point, this has a name. Anyone knows? Very good. Horizontal asymptote. <coughs> this is the, mon the vertical asymptotes, the minus 2 and plus 2. Remember them? These are vertical asymptotes where the function is undefined. What that means, as you approach them, the function is either going to go to plus infinity or negative infinity. VA, ver vertical asymptote, that's HA, horizontal asymptote. The first piece, we said we're going to start from here. You're never going to touch it. If you're above it, if you're going down, you stay below it. If you're going up, you stay above it. You're going to start from here, from the two. You're going to decrease concave downward. That's the first piece. Decrease concave downward. Two, three, four, five. This is the four and a half right here. Before this point, you are decreasing. So you must be coming from the top if you're decreasing. You're going to level right here. Then increasing concave upward. And after that, the function is <coughs> increasing. But wait a minute. You're supposed to end right here. Right? If you're increasing, that means you're coming from where? From the bottom up, not from the top. The top will be decreasing. So you're increasing and you're concave downward. You must be coming from here. And that'll be the graph of it, the correct graph. So that's one of the pieces in section, actually, um, 4 or 5, is how do you find the horizontal asymptotes? Now, we can give you a shortcut to find them without having to take the limit.
and that is when you have an expression, you're looking for the limit as x approaches infinity for all these problems. If you have, for example, 7x to the 5th minus 4x to the 4th over 8x to the 5th plus 6x to the 3rd minus 4x to the 2nd, it doesn't really matter. You look at the exponents, the highest power. If the highest power of the top and the bottom is the same, you can save yourself the headache. And guess what the answer is going to be? <coughs> 7 over 8, the coefficient. You look at the highest exponent, if they're the same, take this number, divide it by that number. That, yep, because this will be divided by x to the fifth, right? So you'll have the limit as x approaches <coughs> infinity of this will be 7. Now you're going to divide this by x to the fifth. That's what? 4 over x. This will be what? 8. Divide this by x to the fifth. 6 over x squared. Divide this by x to the fifth. That'll be what? x to the third in the bottom. And anything that has 0 in it will go to 0. I mean, x in the bottom will go to 0. Sorry. Izzy, could you just show that graph one more time? The previous one? Yeah, the one yep. we just read. Let me just finish this one, Nick. Oh, okay. What's 7 minus 0? 7. What's 8 plus 0 minus 0? 8. This applies for every, like, all the problems? Yep, for the limit x approaches infinity. Now, this only if the ex highest exponent is the same. Now, is there always going to be the highest exponent the same? No. So I'm going to give you the other scenario. What happens if the exponents on the bottom is bigger than the exponents on the top? That's the one you were looking for, Nick? Yep, yep. yep. I'm, all, I'm, I'm all set with it now. Okay. Now, what happens if the exponents on the bottom is higher than the top? I call that bottom heavy. The same for plus or minus infinity. That will, it will be the same answer, yes. So this really doesn't matter if it's plus or minus infinity, Serene. Again, the same thing. This will be the same. If the problem is bottom heavy, notice meaning bottom heavy, the exponents on the bottom is heavier than the top. The answer is always going to be zero, always. So if it's bottom heavy, the answer is zero. Got it? Yep. An example, let's do this one. Limit, as x approaches, doesn't matter, plus or minus infinity. We're going to divide by x to what? To the third. This will be 2 over x squared plus what? 4 over x to the third when you divide by x to the fifth over what? Pl 1 plus... 2 over x to the fourth. Anyone with 0 in it will go to 0. 0 plus 0, 0 over 1 plus 0, 1, that's a 0. It doesn't matter if that number is 60 in front of it. I could have put a 60 here, notice. That'll be what? 60 here. And what is 0 divided by 60? Still 0. The coefficient is not a big deal. So once the exponents on the bottom is higher than the top, it's always going to go to zero. Now, if the top is higher than the bottom, that's the third case, top heavy, we have a couple of options there. If it's only one degree higher, it's going to make the problem more complicated because we're going to find the slant asymptotes. So if, <coughs> if it's top heavy, two x to the seventh minus four x divided by uh, three x to the fourth plus five x squared. Top heavy, that means it's gonna either start from either plus or minus infinity, we're not sure.
Again, the reason for that, divide by x to the seventh. That will be what? 2 minus 4 over x to the sixth over 3 over x to the fourth plus 5 over x to the fifth. We divide them by x to the seventh. And what do you have? 0, 0, 0, 2 over 0, which is does not exist. Does not exist, that means either coming from plus infinity or minus infinity. So that's a shortcut to see what the horizontal asymptotes are, if there is any. We use the shortcut. If the highest power is the same, it's 7 over 8. If you divide the coefficient. If bottom heavy, it's always a 0. If it's top heavy, it's plus or minus infinity. The only problem is when you say plus or minus infinity, sometimes is how sharp. Sometimes the problem looks like this. Comes down, it hits this point, goes back up there. Or this one goes like this. Now the question is, okay, when it goes back to infinity, how quick does it go back to infinity? Does it go like this? Does it go like this? Does it go like this? The same thing with this. It goes, does it go like this? Does it go like that? How do we know which one? That's when we have to find what we call slant asymptotes. So let me take an example on that and see what will happen. And again, I'm repeating section 3, 4, 5, and 6 all in one. Each one of these problems, when I'm done with them, is usually about six, seven pages long. I really don't have a shortcut to them. So let's take another one. Here is one. I'm going to show you that too. That's with this example. Long division, actually. Let's say we have this problem. <coughs> and I'm going to give you the first derivative right now. We have it. And we have the second derivative. Oh, sorry. That's the second derivative. I'll give you the first 8 over x minus 2 cubed. And the first derivative, I'll have it here. x squared minus 4x over. So I'm giving you all the pieces so you're not wasting your time taking the derivative. And I want to graph it, and I want everything about it. Notice one thing about this, that it's top-heavy. See that? The highest power on the top is bigger than the bottom. So your function going to end at infinity. You're going to start from negative infinity, probably, or vice versa. But they're going to be either plus or minus infinity on this end, plus or minus infinity on that end. We also know the function does not exist where? It's not defined when x equals to what? To 2. So x cannot be 2. So the start and end are always going to be the same, right? Well, they could be. Not always. You mean saying the same? What do you mean by start and end? You know, <coughs> this example, they will not be. One will start from negative infinity, one will end at infinity. Right. The, when the power on the top is higher than the bottom, they could have different values. When the power of the top and the bottom are the same, or if it's top heavy, I mean bottom heavy, you're right, they start and end at the same point. But not with this case when the top is higher than the bottom. So let me get one clean sheet, four or five pages down the road. There we go. <coughs> and there's the first derivative. And there's the second derivative. I know x cannot be 2. So there's the 2. Let's put a line through it. Put a red line, thick line. The function is undefined at 2.
before I do anything. Nope, x cannot be 2. So don't worry about it. It's going to be the derivative that doesn't exist there. The second derivative doesn't exist there. You can see that. x cannot be 2. So let's take the first derivative. What is the first derivative equal to 0? And where is the first derivative undefined? Because that will cut the top half of the box here. Equal to 0, you take the derivative x squared minus 4x, set it equal to 0. You can factor a zero, an x out, not a 0. x equals to 0, x equals to 4. Here's the 0, and here's the 4. Let's find the y value. What about undefined? What's the undefined? The bottom equals to 0. We knew that. So let me find the y value when x is 0. Plug it in. What is f of 0? Is that 4 over negative 2? Which is a minus 2. <coughs> Sound horrible. You got the f cold? Yeah. Ugh. What's f of 4? When x is 4, that's 16 minus 8 plus 4 over what? 2? 12 over 2, is that a 6? Now I'm going to take a test point in each one of these segments. So what should we use? Less than 0. 0 and 2. 2 and 4. 3, more than 4, 5. <coughs> what is the first derivative at negative 1? And what's the first derivative at 1? And what's the first derivative at 3? And what's the first derivative at 5? Let's see what they are. I know the bottom is always positive, because why? That's a squared. <coughs> so I'm not going to waste my time on it. Minus 1, that'll be 1 plus 4, that's a positive. The derivative of 1, the bottom is positive. That's 1 minus 4, that's a negative 3, that's a negative. How about the 3? That's a positive in the bottom. 9 minus what? 12. Is that a negative? And what's the last one? The 5. 25 minus 20. That's positive, right? Let's fill in the blank. Positive here. Increasing. Negative here, decreasing. That's the max point. <coughs> After that, decreasing, then increasing. That's a min point. First derivative is done. What about the second derivative? Well, let's look at it. Let's look at the second derivative. I like the second derivative short.
Where is the second derivative equal to 0? None. Good. Where is the second derivative undefined? That's a 2. Here's good news. If there's any positive news, it says, you know what? It's only the 2. That's the only cut in the bottom. I don't have to add any more cuts to it. So let's pick, pick a test point less than a 2, how about a 1? More than a 2, how about a 3? What's the second derivative at 1? Positive on the top, negative on the bottom, that's a negative. Concave downward. What's the second derivative at 3? Positive on the top, positive on the bottom, that's a positive. Concave which way? Upward. I'm almost done. We said top heavy. When we, st when we looked at this, we said this function is top heavy. Since it's top heavy, you're going to start from where? Either plus or minus infinity, where are you going to end at? Plus or minus infinity. I'm not sure which one. The graph will tell me. I'm going to attempt to graph it, then I'm going to come back and add something else to make sure I get the right graph. So the first graph I do is not going to be the perfect graph. Give me an idea. So here's my graph based on the table I have. And again, it's not going to be a great one, but we'll be okay. 0 and minus 2. Right here. That's the max point. 1 and 2. That's a vertical asymptote. The function is undefined there. And 4 and 6. 4. That's a min point. So here's the, what it says to me. Before you get to this point, the function is what? Increasing. Concave downward. After you hit that point, it's decreasing. Concave. Till you hit the close to that line. I'm not sure how steep there I'm going to be. That's where the problem is. Which one of these? That, I don't know. The same thing right here. I know it's decreasing from here to there. It hits that, then increase. Well, that's increasing. That's increasing. Which one of them? So I need to figure out which one of these lines is going to be. I'm not sure which one of these lines my answer is going to be. And this is where the slant asymptote is going to come in. That's the only piece left. I'm going to find a line here, and that will be my slant asymptote. That's going to tell me what the graph is going to look like. <coughs> That's also in section 4 or 5, the slant asymptote. There was two things, the one I showed you early, the vertical asymptote and the slant asymptotes. So how do we find the slant asymptotes? To find the slant asymptote, you want to divide your function. This is my function, f of x. We're going to do a synthetic division, or long division. I'm sorry, not synthetic, long division. I can do synthetic, but we'll do a long division. 
I'm going to divide this by x minus 2. You only want to do this, by the way, for our book, when the power on the top is one degree higher than the power on the bottom. Because if it's quadratic, it's a mess. <coughs> so you're, you're going to see the examples you're going to see in our book only when the top is one degree higher than the bottom. One degree. Let's divide them. What's x squared by x? x times x squared. I mean x times x. x squared. x times a minus 2, a negative 2x. Let's change the sign and add them or subtract them. So what's left? Just the 4? So that problem can be written as what? f of x now can be written as x plus 4 over x minus 2. That's the answer and that's your remainder. Just like when you're dividing numbers. If you divide 15 by 4 you go 15 by 4 is what? 3. 3 times 4 is 12. What's the remainder? 3. That's 3 plus 3 over 4. Or you write that 3 and 3 fourths. That's the same thing. It's the answer, the quotient, plus the remainder, which is 4 over x minus 2. This is the equation for your slant asymptote now. Right there. That's my slant asymptote. Y equals to whatever that expression is. In this case, it just happens to be x. There is no x plus 1. There is no x minus 5. Just x. That's your slant asymptote. Now I'm going to go graph it the correct way. Once I have that line, <coughs> no more guessing here which way it's going to be. I don't have to guess now. It has to be what? No denominator? For the slant asymptote? Yeah. No. It's going to be a linear function. Yep. Our book is only going to deal with one degree higher than this, so it's always going to be a linear. So this has nothing to do with So this is the expression for the slant asymptote. So for example, if this was x plus 3x, you have plus 3x here, so you end up with 1x plus 4. The slant asymptote becomes x plus 1 because you got to continue dividing. So now I'm going to graph it. Yeah, we just looked at this. That's nothing to do with the slant asymptote. That's the equation for the slant asymptote, the one without the fraction. So now when I go to graph it, here's the first thing. I'm going to bring in the slant asymptote. I'm going to say, you know what? y equals to x. What does that graph look like? That's a straight line. That's your slant asymptote. That's your slant asymptote. 1 and 2, that's your vertical asymptote. <coughs> Slant asymptote, I'm just labeling them here. Vertical, not AA, vertical asymptote. I feel like I need to go to AA right now. Now let's look at the points. 0 and negative 2, right here, isn't it? So the function is de increasing till it hits that point. Since you have the, the slant asymptote increase from here till it hits this one, then start to decrease. It never crosses the vertical asymptote. After that, we have the 4 and 6. Somewhere here, the 4 and 6. The function is decreasing. It's coming from way up there. It's decreasing till it hits that point. Once it hits, it starts to increase, and it's going to level with this vertical asymptote, like, th like this. So that's the significance of the vertical asymptote. They tell us how it's going to rise, how quick, how slow. We know it's going to go to infinity, but this will tell us the rate it's going to go to infinity with. No? Okay. And that's the end of that problem.